for and my purpose is at all times to try and defend uh, the witnesses, do what we possibly can to help them. A lot of them are very uh, annoyed by the Channel 4 program, but there's very important information which is now coming out from the witnesses themselves about the lovely Joanne. Now I, I have to say I've always had a great deal of respect and time for Joanne. She's a lovely woman, beautiful in fact, uh, and that's one of the points. Now the point is that right at the very start of the Amash project I was warned by Richard D. Hall that Amash was compromised. One half of Amash was compromised and it wasn't me. Those were his words or words to that effect. Now the point about that is he never actually told me the actual source or reasons and basically since then he hasn't actually had any involvement with Amash. At all. Stop. Okay, there's been a great deal of criticism about the Amash project and some of it justified, I feel. The Channel 4 program has been basically on two levels. One, a very great success in targeting a certain demographic, which is basically the younger teenage area uh, of, of that group. And there's very important reasons for that. Secondly, anybody who knows anything about television, anybody involved with the UFO community who knows anything at all about the UFO subject, realizes that the program was a catastrophic trash job. In fact, it was so catastrophically trashed, trashy and uh, damaging to people that um, it was too obviously bad. Okay, since this Channel 4 program, a number of very important factors have started to emerge and may the main factor is that witnesses have spoken to me and communicated with me by email that Joanne is a reptilian. More precisely, Joanne has actually uh, one witness has actually stated very clearly that Joanne actually told him that she was a dinoid reptilian, a particular breed of reptilian. Now the point is, what does this really mean? Does it mean she's actually an alien or whether or not she is or is not an alien is actually beside the point. You don't tell a witness that you're about to interview that you're a fecking alien. It's not the kind of empathic thing that a therapist or professional or reasonable person should ever say unless there is a real reason behind it. Now the point about the Amash project is it's about mind control, abductees and contactees. It's also meant to be a helpline. So it sh people shouldn't be too surprised if we're actually going to encounter some kind of alien communication in the process of doing this thing. It's not exactly an illogical set of circumstances. However, what is disingenuous is when the person who sets that up and who is meant to be providing help for the witnesses is actually telling the witnesses that she's an alien in the first place. It is that the very first Amash witness who was on the phone to me many times during her traumatic time as her daughter was taken away from her by the social services, which we regard as an agenda to actually take particularly sensitive, psychic uh, enhanced and very highly developed young children away from their mothers, as uh, John Shelton alluded to. Uh, I'm not going to use her real name, in fact I'm not going to use her name at all, but what she has stated is, I have just been one email which has been sent to me by the first Amash witness that was formally recorded by Joanne. Now it's been fully published, but so I'm only going to highlight a couple of points, but this is a common feature amongst a lot of Amash witnesses who've emailed to me. It is sad, so sad, so much sadness has been happening since Amash walked into my house. The crux of this email is it is sad, so sad, so much sadness has been happening since Amash walked into my house. This refers to this particular person's life has fallen into collapse since her beautiful and wonderful empathic and telepathic daughter was taken from her after this individual had a series of very major encounters with ETs even a, an actual visitation into a massive pyramid. But what she specifically said, I was screwed, like you said. When Joanne was in my house, I immediately knew she was a lizard, and she knew I knew. 
she has mind powers my mind was held so I could not speak out about using my real name I remember totally having no actual brain control at that point when you were putting your camera away I was floundered trying to form words please don't use my name this is crucial because we did use her name in the edit and as a result of that the social services saw that edit and used that against her in court to take her child away now the rest of this email is uh, about various important things with regard to the name of her child uh, but she she goes on to say Joanne was disruptive to my subtle energy aware of my sensitivity and able beyond my belief or, uh, or rather to say that and able beyond my belief bless you for saying she is a lovely lady an alien who, who come to earth to destroy light on earth is going to be very charming. Now, these are the words of an Amash witness. This is important because this concerns the wider public and uh, while I'm criticizing a former colleague very severely it's because this material illustrates that it is a very dangerous thing that she's doing. Now her final paragraph in this section is I hope you will find it fascinating to you to read this it rings all true to me I am the person this chapter is about and my child is the golden one who has been sought after by darkness for eons you will read why I believe Amash had a huge agenda and removing her daughter's name from me was the top point on the list of things to do uh, there's now quite a lot of material in this which refers to the origins of her daughter through time and the importance that her daughter has. Uh, other agencies, I've spoken to ex-MI5 people, I don't know what her, how ex they are, we know we have John Shelton's testimony uh, and we have another of other sources where star seed children uh, or indigo children are being specifically targeted by health service agents I will call them agents within the health service to specifically remove them from the population and to use for extremely horrendous purposes psychically for the military uh, my lab agenda uh, this means that uh, I've I know personally a number of people from other countries who've been specifically targeted and excluded themselves out of this kind of operation. So this is about this is about indigo children or people whose DNA and human full sense of human senses are actually emerging. They're effectively like a new generation of human who are emerging out of like a chrysalis uh, and evolving into a higher full being with a superb range of senses and this is a vital process which we must protect we must take every step possible to protect the indigo children or the star seed children I've also recently in, in, uh, um, inter interviewed a gentleman who is a star seed or claims to be a star seed and is actually saying that the military black ops has stopped ascension and transhumanization this is the end of the human era if the next generation of evolving hypersensitive individual humans are being targeted as they are in the education system and by nefarious individuals and being taken out or removed or hampered with or actually murdered as happened with one of the Amash witnesses uh, we are facing extinction in this century where the situation of human involvement will be spiritual robots and soulless humans so we now have a situation active right now that we've got to be aware of this and when witnesses who've been interviewed and um, by a very lovely lady who has got a very serious toxic agenda and link according to a number of other psychics and empathic individuals have spotted this very dangerous link off planet something off planet is accessing this person according to these other specialists We've essentially talked about one uh, witness, one Amash witness who's personally communicated to me about uh, with her concerns. Um, yesterday, 
I had a second Amash witness who told me on the telephone, and we planned to talk in the next couple of days, that Joanne actually told him, actually told him that she was a dinoid reptoid, reptoid or a dinoid reptilian. She also said, according to this witness, and I'm reporting what other Amash witnesses are saying here, I'm not saying it, I'm reporting what Amash witnesses have told me, okay? That she could actually see, on occasion, she could actually see her reptile tail, her light body tail, that's the, that's the light body that occupies the so-called human body. Now the point about the beautiful Joanne is she had a massively hypnotic beauty about her which did entrance people. Now the fact is that after this Channel 4 program has gone on the air, we are only now getting this material out. I've encountered this situation before in my Energy 106 uh, work where we ran a megawatt FM pirate from the Irish border into Belfast for nine years without anybody causing us a problem. Oh, like we don't have a license, but hey, you can transmit dance music into Belfast for nine years on full power. Uh, that individual was actually abducted four times. He was officially listed missing, but he had a signature where the whole inner eye socket would light up. Now, this is described in Basis 25, Part 4, by Max Spears, who actually mentions this issue about the eyes. The point about the eyes is there's basically two factions happen. A, you'll have a full light up of the entire eye socket. You'll only see it for a very brief period of time. And I noticed this with certain senior staff members at Sky Television in my final days when I was warning Sky Television that they were compromised by extremely dangerous forces. They didn't like what I said and they fired me. Subsequently, three of those individuals have been fired by Sky Television, so maybe there's hope for Sky TV yet, but who knows. The point is that Max Spires, Spears, who is a character a bit like James Casbolt, he's part of the same track of uh, super soldiers, uh, for want of a better word, and because of the aircraft I have to speak very quickly here. This involves Sarah Stanger, it involves uh, James Casbolt or Michael Prince, it involves Michael Spears. I've been contacted by other individuals who claim to have similar contacts uh, to this group of British people uh, who have been part of the so-called Super Soldier program. Super Soldier being a very loose, widely used term. But the, the point is that he specifically references how when alters take over, as to say an alternate personality or something which inhabits the, the, the being, the reflectivity of the eye will change. Sometimes it will dim. And I've seen that in individuals, in fact, just before I went to the Irish UFO conference where I uh, had a very nice time with Joanne in 2009, I had my house keys stolen uh, in a pub as this particular strange lady came down, sat down right in front of me in the pub. And uh, when I looked into her eyes, I could see eternal darkness. When you actually see in there, you just keep seeing into a blackness that never stops. And she also, uh, her head movement behavior was a signature of something very strange in that she would turn her head a bit like a bird or a reptile would move the head to get a vertical, a vertical uh, optical look at you as well as a horizontal optical look at you. And I took that as a very serious signature. I got up from the table, stood well back from her and when my back was turned she stole my jacket which is a very expensive jacket on the house keys. I reported this to the police and two to three weeks later the police actually phoned up. They were very quick on the case. Uh, they made inquiries but I got a phone call from a particularly well-spoken police officer who basically told me do not pursue this case and we'll leave it at that. Okay. So the point is that this idea of the eyes is very important and one of the biggest signatures to the lovely Joanne is her very beautiful eyes, very well put together. Okay, so uh, I do not want to character assassinate Joanne Summerscales, but the point is she set herself up in this organization. She is making contact with vulnerable individuals and they are writing to me and they're saying that their lives are being taken and destroyed and whatever afterwards. Teenage kids who have come to me because they know where I live because Channel 4 published and showed my front door and I specifically didn't want that to happen. So now I've got people coming here to, to say hello to me 
And these are very, these kids are, have been very heavily switched on by this program, which is why it's been a success in one regard and where most of the UFO community have absolutely trashed the whole thing. Um, the point is that other individuals have come to me and said they've, they have had dreams of teenage boys with helmets on their head in terror with some kind of thing that they actually grow on their head with their own thoughts uh, and this is part of these horrendous underground bases which are claimed to exist with uh, children, women and uh, young boys being used in the most despicable manner by some say the Fourth Reich agenda. Um, we have a very serious problem with human society if we are going to survive those of us who can wake up must take action, but the first thing you must do is stay off the internet, stay off the mobile phone, and keep quiet. Regroup quietly. If you can find others who, will, who are of like mind, do so. But don't communicate using computers, mobile phones, um, or anything of that nature with your original thought intent because these devices are part of an artificial intelligence system which is probing your mind, that's what these damn Wi-Fi things are, and as now we've got Wi-Fi everywhere, they're pumping it into tube stations, and the tunnel effect of the tube station amplifies the signal immensely. Why are they putting it in tube stations when you can only spend a few seconds standing at a tube to access the internet is ridiculous, so there must be another agenda there. People are rushing about these tube stations, busy getting trains, they're not sitting there on the damn internet. Um, so I feel that there's a very serious agenda to attack humanity. Uh, as part of the Amash project, I was trying my best to steer it within to keep the witnesses clear. And I'm continuing to try and do that as best as I can. I'm continuing my research with the BASIS project. I've been doing this work for about 40 to 45 years, ever since I've been a teenager. And uh, more people are coming forward and we're going to try and release as much information as we can, knowing that I'm in full view of what's going on, and uh, we'll be there to take the ball. So, in essence, I have to apologize for my role in the Amash project. I was working from the inside frequently with very severe rows with Joanne, uh, frequently walked out, and there were questions as to whether I would continue, but I felt that being in the, the project was better than being out of it. Now Joanne has asked, has told me my services are no, are no longer required. Well, after two and a half years of extensive work, there's a lot of lost, a uh, lot of time that's been used and a lot of expense that's been put into this. Uh, the Amash project basic aim of helping mind-controlled abductees and contactees should be continued. We're taking steps to make that happen with other people. We're hoping to have a conference in early August or mid-August with abductees and contactees and mind control and targeted individuals only those people. Uh, if anybody else wants to come along uh, they're welcome but we're going to have to start checking people for implants and we're going to set up a procedure to do that so everybody who attends any future events gets checked. All UFO investigators who are going to go and start interviewing people uh, should all go through a, a periodic MOT to check that they are not some kind of disingenuous person or maybe somebody who's been abducted and has implants. There are basic steps which, can, which we can take with an ultraviolet lamp and basic radio signal equipment just to make basic checks. On the, on the subject of checks, um, Joanne has initiated a thing called childhood experiences with some other specialists in this field. I feel that based on the testimony and the statements that have been emailed and spoken to me by Amash witnesses, I feel that it is absolutely not on that Joanne and the childhood experiencer or the checks feature of the Amash project should be engaged. I feel that her contact with children is absolutely not on. Well, finally, I'd like to extend uh, my gratitude to all the <coughs> Amash. <laughs> Sorry. Finally, I'd like to extend my gratitude to all of the Amash witnesses who stood up, 
got videoed and took the blows publicly from rather ignorant individuals and rather inconsiderate people. Uh, I feel that we have been severely let down by Channel 4 about this situation and uh, I feel that their whole attitude towards this subject is nefarious in the extreme and I wish to make it very clear that you are being scanned. You are being deep scanned and if you feel in the broadcasting main media that you're going to get away with taking humanity out, you have got a great deal to think about. The important thing that with the new um, contactee abduction conference is or group that we're putting together is to enhance the positive. Uh, we've been concentrating too much on, on, the, on the negative side because I feel very strongly that people have been led up the garden path. Um, the point is that we want to encourage a positive role in humanity's growth into a wonderfully new world of hypersensitivity and wonderful 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 things so we want to get away from the fear agenda the point is that we are able to create realities our thoughts our choices our consciousness so what we believe is happening is that our thoughts and consciousness are being attacked so that we do not create the correct reality so we need to use that higher spirituality that higher awareness to move on and upwards to a higher vibrational level of existence and to create a wonderful world for ourselves and not to have this fear-based terrible world that's being pushed on us uh, at the moment. But being aware that your house is on fire doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it just means you can take steps to stop your house going on fire. So that's my basic view on that. We've got to work together to produce a positive and more wonderful experience for the human beings and to stop these negative forces from taking control and taking the wonderful spirituality and the wonderful higher essence of humanity away from us. But if we don't wake up and if we don't take steps, we will lose this. So we have to grow and be aware that the world and the universe has predators. That's part of nature. But like anything that grows wonderful, you've got to protect the precious wonders. And the first thing we've got to do is to protect the new star seed children and the new star seeds to protect them so that we can all go into a more wonderful and brilliant future.